parents watching out there right now, this is going to be an unbelievable story for you. Imagine a mom having to come to terms with the unreasonable. She doesn't want her own two teenage sons in the same home as a woman who shot and killed her two daughters in their sleep 20 years ago. But that's exactly what's happening thanks to a complicated custody battle. Joining me now is Trish Conlon and her attorney, Todd DeValance. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, Trish, it's a really complicated story. Uh, your, hu your former husband used to be married. They had two girls. Mm -hmm. His former wife shot those two girls while they were sleeping in bed. She was proven to be insane, went to a mental institution, and is now out. In the meantime, you married that man and had two children of your own. And now he's back with the first wife and she's with your children? That's correct. So you have gone to court to try and change the custody of this. And what happened? Um, we filed um, a case. We, we got an emergency restraining order uh, mid-June. And um, we had an, um, a cause, an adequate cause hearing um, on July 25th. And on July 25th, um, the court found that there was no reason for us to continue the case and seek a change in the parenting plan. And um, Mr. this DeValance, is a lot of legalese for me, so I, I, I'll let him talk, I, I, jump in. I know. Yeah. On its face for any parent, Mr. DeValance, you look at this and you say, how could a woman, I don't care if she was sane or not, how could a woman kill her own two children and now be in the home with your client's two children? Well, absolutely, and we believe that the court erred in this case. Uh, uh, there was an abuse of discretion by the commissioner, uh, and we're hopeful, we're hopeful that we'll have that decision overturned by, by a judge on August 25th. But what was the reason that they gave you as to why this would be reasonable? Well, the findings were that because the children uh, have been exposed to this woman for the past three years, uh, there had been no harm to the children for the past three years. Uh, the court didn't see any risk uh, to the kids. Uh, now, obviously, as you're aware, uh, the children were, were told to lie to their mother about her presence in the home. Uh, the children were, call, were, were told to call her by a different name. Um, and as soon as, as my client learned that uh, this woman was back in the home, she immediately took action. I mean, Ms. Conlon, this would be like saying that somebody who's been convicted of child abuse or murder that suddenly they're just cured and because something hasn't happened in the last three years that something won't? Exactly. Um, you know, one of the things that's very disturbing is that if, um, if it had been sexual abuse of children, then a person would never be allowed around children again. Right. Um, but killing children doesn't seem to rank at the same level as sexual abuse, which is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. I want to read the quote from the commissioner's statement. Uh, these are the particular people who made that custody decision. I have to look at this dispassionately. Would I ever want my children around her? Speaking of the other woman, I would say no, but that is an emotional reaction coming from a parent. Well, for goodness sake, if we don't have emotional reactions as parents anymore about the safety of our own kids, what do we have to turn to, Mr. DeValance? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, clearly, clearly, there's adequate cause for the court to take a look at this case. Whether it's appointing to uh, appoint a parenting evaluator to do an investigation, whether it's to uh, impose adequate safeguards in the home, uh, whether it be no unsupervised contact with this woman, there's a lot of things the court has the discretion to do beyond just a change in, the, in a child's primary residence. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, the court completely dismissed the case. We want to say that we reached out to the attorney for the other side of this uh, debate. They're not commenting right now. Before I go, Ms. Conlon, um, yes. how, do you, how do you get through your day wondering if your kids are safe or not? <laughs> uh, a lot of prayer. Um, trusting God. Uh, every night we call the boys, um, and we're doing Bible readings with them every night to connect with them, um, make sure they're safe, just give them some comfort each night. So um, that... I guess it's a thing where at this point I'm going to have to trust and um, have some faith and tell the legal system um, helps. <laughs> okay. An amazing story. Uh, unbelievable, really. Trish Conlon and Todd DeValance, keep us up to date on what happens. All the best to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks. you.